Excellences, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's given me great pleasure to extend to you all a warm welcome on behalf of Brain o Vision and our host colleges. On behalf of Brain o Vision, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all the distinguished participants to this event. Here at Online Faculty Development Program on Artificial Intelligence. So it is with special excitement that I am pleasure to welcome Dr. S.S. Mantasar. Dr. S.S. Mantasar, former chairman of AICT, he is an eminent academician. At present, he is Chancellor KLU and adjunct professor NIS Bangalore. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for your welcome, sir. Welcome, Dr. Mathur, sir. So. Yeah, hello. Good evening. So, do we uh, start off? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So, I'll share the uh, screen. And uh, you tell me if you can uh, see the, uh, you know, screen. Okay, yeah. okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, can you? Uh, so, can you see the uh, slide? Yes, sir. So I'll start the uh, presentation. Right, right, sir. Right, sir. Right. Yeah. So uh, today uh, we are uh, first of all good evening to all the uh, uh, participants, the faculty, the uh, uh, students uh, would probably be there, and. Uh, the others who are uh, invited. Now, artificial intelligence is something that we are uh, probably uh, listening uh, day in and day out. Uh, and uh, uh, probably people must be telling you, your uh, smart watch has a artificial intelligence, uh, you know, uh, programs built into it. Your washing machine has it, your TV has it, your car has it and so on. So through the next half an hour, I'll try and uh, take you through to uh, understanding what is artificial intelligence and uh, what are the capabilities and so on. Now to start with, uh, before, before trying to really understand what is artificial intelligence, we will try and understand what is intelligence. Artificial is something that will come later, okay? So we, I have uh, here a, uh, a slide which uh, tells you about human intelligence versus artificial intelligence. And the idea is uh, we, who, who is the uh, better of the uh, two. So uh, rather than get into a, a debate of who has, the more, has more intelligence, we need to understand the concepts and uh, try and uh, figure out what AI really means. First of all, uh, when we define intelligence, uh, we do several things. We have cognitive abilities, and there is a general capacity to consciously adjust to thinking new requirements. When we are doing performing some job, we automatically, you know, figure out how to do, when to do, what to do, how to adapt and so on. So when you're walking, if there are obstacles, you automatically move out of the obstacle and walk. So there is all this put together is probably intelligence. There is much more to what is intelligence. I'm, I'm just going through steps. Intelligence is also the aggregate or global capacity of an individual to act purposefully, to think rationally, and to deal effectively with his environment. So there must be a pur acting purposefully is extremely important. 
which means you don't do things just for the heck of it. There is some purpose and therefore you're doing and the purpose will define how you do it. And you also need to think rationally. There are many situations where certain kind of decisions are expected and uh, this whole process of intelligence helps you to, to take the correct decision and deal effectively with the environment. So you think, you uh, create patterns, you understand the environment, and then you take decisions. That is dealing effectively with this, with the environment. Now, as far as intelligence is concerned, there are several or sense organs that we have. We have eyes, ears, tongue, skin, and nose. The five classic senses to help they help to protect the body. So they give you, they are, they act like sensors. Some of you may be knowing IoT, Internet of Things and sensors and things like that. Here, these are basic sensors, sensors which are available for a human being. These human sense organs, they contain receptors, something to receive and relay information through sensory neurons to the appropriate places within the nervous system. So there is a sensor, there is a receiver, and it, there, is a, there is a nervous system with, through which this uh, you know, information is transmitted. So there is eye, there is ear, tongue, skin, and nose. They help, they act like receptors. They relay information to sensory neurons to the appropriate places within the nervous system. Each sense organ, contains different receptors. The eye has different receptor, the nose has different receptors, and so on. So these are the five basic senses which create an environment of information for you. Someone will feel that, someone will take decisions on that, and so on. So this is the fundamental aspect of human uh, intelligence. They become the basis of providing information to build intelligence. For example, if I'm crossing the road and if I close my eyes and cross across the road, then possibly there is a chance of my meeting with an accident. And someone, an onlooker might as well say that the person is he not intelligent. So the question is, are you in full control of the faculties that you have or the senses that you have. In terms of, in, in terms of human senses, yeah. So shall I continue, please? Hello? Am I, am I audible? Am I, am I audible, please? Hello? 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 Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. So I'll continue the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, continuing on the human uh, intelligence, there are more senses which actually aid the human being. Neurologists actually identify 21 senses, not just five. The sense of touch is actually somatic sense, including perception of pressure, heat, and pain. So there are different receptors which will allow the nervous system to realize that there is pressure, there is heat, there is pain, and there are also a variety of inter interoceptive senses which analyze information that originates from within the body. So there are receptors, there are transmitters, there are there is a nervous system, 
to make all this happen and the collective information creates patterns and creates what collectively we call as intelligence in interoceptive senses include balance the ability to stand direct the body alignment the organic sense the sense of internal condition such as hunger and thirst will immediately know if we are hungry we will know if we are thirsty now who is making that there are certain receptors there are certain receivers there's a nervous system again so therefore all this will help build intelligence now proprioception the brain's knowledge of relative positions of body parts uh, for example when i am walking i don't bang into the wall now that is also a part of uh, something is being sent something is being analyzed some decision is being made and so on now there is a misconception of intelligence it is not knowledge through acquisition of knowledge though acquisition of knowledge depends to great extent and vice versa so intelligence is just not knowledge there is lot a lot more beyond behind that and intelligence is also not memory even without memory intelligence is possible and intelligence can be seen both normal both in normal and abnormal behavior for example a delinquent uh, in a delinquent condition also there can be intelligence and so on now further going further little on human intelligence you have a uh, intelligence quotient there is a mental age and there is a physical age and the ratio of these two will actually tell you what is that intelligence quotient so intelligence quotient is a total score derived from one of several standardized tests designed to assess human intelligence there when you go to a you know psychologist he will uh design several tests and find out how you react to them and then your mental age and physical age the ratio of that will give you the intelligence quotient so for example if you are behaving like a child when you are 25 years old then probably there is some problem with the way you comprehend things and there is a problem with the iq now in terms of classification a near genius will have an iq of 140 or above and uh, probably on the other end of the scale a so called idiot will have an in, uh, intelligence quotient of about 20 0 to 24 so uh, this is the uh, spread between these there are uh, several uh, stages and so on now having looked at what is human intelligence we will look at what is artificial intelligence now if i in some way if i can bring several sensors together our several transducers together measure the output of that of those sensors or those transducers given a certain input and create a relationship between this input and the output then i am in some way measuring the uh, the uh, the parameter that i uh, want to measure for example i want to measure a displacement then i use a you know a uh, a uh, uh, a transducer to measure the displacement or i want to measure the temperature or i want to measure the pressure a pressure transducer and things like that now uh, in very simple terms you can measure large displacements you can measure small displacements uh, and and so on you can on one end uh, uh, you can use uh, rheostats on the other end you can use you know uh, devices which uh, measure very small Uh, displacements <laughs> now the ability of a digital computer or compute and once you measure those uh, parameters you put all of them together into an application and create some relationships between different parameters and based on that you take certain decisions so that's uh, that's like building an artificial uh, system which can which reacts on certain inputs based on certain sensor in uh, outputs the ability of a digital computer or computer controlled robot to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings for example you have you have systems where you, you know you take a small uh, strain gauge you apply a certain uh, temperature or certain uh, pressure its uh, resistance will vary or you measure the way change in capacitance or you measure you know change in inductance and things like that and the change is actually in terms of the uh, parameter that you want to measure 
Now putting all that together, you are building some device which, uh, which artificially can do some a small aspect of what the human being can do similarly. So artificial intelligence is a broad field of study dedicated to complex problem solving. Now, because of the uh, because of the use of computers and very high computing power uh, available, a lot of uh, complex uh, problem solving can be done. Multiple calculations can be done. Pattern pattern recognition can be done. Image processing can be done, and so on. Now, machine learning is usually considered as subfield of artificial intelligence, and machine learning is a data driven approach. There's a lot of data that is collected from different sensors. A data-driven approach focused on creating algorithms that has the ability to learn from being explicitly programmed. Now that is machine learning. You have data and you build in into a feature where it starts learning by itself. Now deep learning is a subfield of machine learning focused on deep neural networks able to automatically learn hierarchical representations. So a certain process you can define by a hierarchical representation and there are, uh, a focus will generally be on deep uh, neural uh, networks and deep learning will become a subset of uh, machine learning. Now, these are the broad areas of AI. Uh, now, uh, going back, back uh, to understand what is artificial intelligence, there are certain goals set for AI. One is deduction. There are a set of uh, statements made and you deduce something from those set of statements. Then you reason out as to why and why not. And then you do the problem solving. So goals of AI are always deduction, reasoning, and problem solving. In the, the once, uh, if we would like to go to the early history, in 1950, you had an English mathematician, Alan Turing, and most of the artificial intelligence basics comes on a simple theory that he, uh, Alan Turing, created. Now, computing, uh, he had a paper uh, published, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. This is way back in 1950, the advent of C language and the ability to talk to the machines through mnemonics and uh, pseudocode and things like that. The, all these things started becoming a reality. Now, the idea is, can machines think? Further work came out in 1956 when, uh, you know, in a workshop at Dartmouth sponsored by John McCarthy. Now, in this uh, workshop, the fundamental question was, does artificial intelligence exist? So this was the basics of what uh, uh, AI is all about. Now, during test is actually an imitation of a game test. In short, without going into the details of what is this Turing uh, test, we need to go back to a lot of mathematics to get into the fundamentals of Turing test. Uh, I'll say that Turing test is, a, is something that you do for finding out the uh, intelligence that a machine has or test of a machine's ability to demonstrate intelligence, right? There are certain statements stored certain data is incoming through certain sensors. You act on this through another set of statements, deduce, reason out, and then you give out solutions. Then you say that the machine is also intelligent. Now here, in the very early days, in 1966, there was a computer program, which was developed by Joseph Weizenbaum. Now, this was back in 1966. It is a natural language processing uh, example. Natural language processing is a great example of AI. One of the first chatbots that came into existence was Eliza. Eliza is the name of this uh, application. What it used to do is pick up statements from the, from the speaker and uh, turn them around, use the keywords and shoot back answers in the form of questions that the user asks. And it uses a certain amount of stored data to create new questions. This was named after Eliza Doolittle, a character in George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. 
Now, the, what can ELISA do? These were the early times of AI. This program can simulate a human-like interaction. Its mission was the attempt to replicate the conversation between a psychoanalyst analyst and a patient. In a therapeutic situation, for example, it is very difficult to get answers from certain people because they either they are inhibited or they have probably some question mark on the intelligence, the way they use their faculties. Therefore, ELISA can allow them to get on to a, some kind of a machine talking to them back and it can get the people interested. And the person who is otherwise inhibited will start freely talking to the machine. And therefore, the data that is collected will be analyzed to find out what is what was actually wrong with the uh, person. Now, uh, going uh, fast forwarding the AI uh, paradigm, in 2013, a research team from Carnegie Mellon University released Neverending Image Learner, N-E-I-L, a semantic machine learning system that could compare and analyze image relationships. Suppose you take two photographs and find, if you want to find out if they are similar, then you'll have to pick out some features from one photograph, as some set of features from another photograph, compare them and say that these are similar things like that. So in uh, Canning Law in 2013, created an AI program to do this. In 2014, Microsoft released Cortana, their version of a virtual assistant similar to Siri on iOS. Now, 2014, in 24, the same year, Amazon created Alexa, which some of you must be knowing, is a home assistant that developed into smart speakers that function as personal assistants. In fact, today, on many universities, uh, in many universities, Alexa-like devices are used for new students to take them around the campus and teach them what is the course content, how they, what are their do's and don'ts on the campus, and things like that. In 2016, Google released Google Home. Again, something similar to Alexa. Uh, it's a smart speaker that uses AI to act as a personal assistant. So it will prompt you, it will make you remember, it will keep asking you questions, uh, telling you the maybe the status at home and things like that. Again, in the same year, uh, a humanoid robot named Sophia was created by Hanson Robotics. And this was something very, very similar to an actual human being. And it also had uh, humanoid like, uh, you know, keen likeness, actually looking like a human being uh, and uh, with our ability to see, which means image recognition. There are cameras, there are images uh, picked up, there are feature recognition, there are all kinds of image processing done. And based on that, it can also twitch face, it can make expressions, and communicate through AI. Now that was Sophia in 2016. Again, a very, very uh, imaginative, innovative application of AI. Then in 2017, the Facebook AI Research Lab trained two dialogue agents. These are called chatbots to communicate with each other in order to learn how to negotiate. Now. Uh, there, there is a lot of talk in the in the uh, digital uh, learning space that we uh, can can uh, skills be learned through digital learning methods and so on. Now the, here is a AI uh, methodology which will allow you to do that. However, chat as the chatbots conversed, they diverged from human language and invented their own language to communicate with one another, exhibiting artificial intelligence to a great degree which means they started off communicating in a certain fashion. They ended up communicating with another in another manner where that, that transition happened because of AI. In 2018, Samsung introduced Bixby, a virtual assistant. Again, something similar to Alexa. But Bixby's functions include voice, where the user can speak to and ask questions like Alexa, recommendations, suggestions, it had vision, it could, uh, it could see, it had the seeing ability, uh, which was built into the camera application, and it can see what the user sees. Identification, search, purchase, translation, landmark recognition, all that is possible. And actually they are built into drones today, which 
do a lot of uh, surveillance uh, jobs. Then in 2018, you had Alibaba, Chinese technology uh, group, language processing, and AI outsource human intellect at the Stanford reading and comprehension test. And Alibaba processing scored hands down in that uh, uh, problem, problem solving. Then in the same year, Google developed BERT, the first bi-directional unsupervised language representation that can be used on a variety of natural language tasks using transfer learning, which means this, this can be actually used in contextual settings and uh, it translates the uh, human uh, language. Now, how we have seen some applications, we have seen natural intelligence, we have seen artificial intelligence, we have seen some applications of AI, now let's see how, this, how does this AI work. AI works with the help of, like I said, artificial neurons. In a, in a human being, you have natural uh, neurons. Here you have artificial neurons. And therefore you have an artificial neural network. There, there is a natural neural network. Here you have artificial neural network. And there are scientific theorems. So you, the logic will be tested and things like that. Now, in a structure of a biological neuron, you had dendrites act, act as inputs. You had soma, which processes the inputs. You had axon, which turns the processed inputs into outputs, and synapses, which have the electrochemical contact between neurons. So between receptor and between transmitter and the neuro uh, neurological uh, you know, chain that we have, the decisions keep happening in a in a biological uh, neuron driven process now as different from that you have an artificial neuron problem in artificial neural networks whatever the human being does or human system does the artificial neural networks mimic those processes so in an artificial neuron as well you have axons you have synapses you have dendrites you have body, which is the soma, and you have accent. So input, which is accent, to output, which could again be accent, and so on. So there, and there are different biases uh, created to change the uh, structures and uh, make the uh, decisions possible, akin to the uh, chemical process change that happens within the human uh, neuro, uh, neurological systems. Now, here, uh, in the artificial system, you also have intelligent agents. So, agents are like sensors. In a natural system, you have eyes, you have uh, ears, you have nose, and so on. You have skin, which act as sensors. In an artificial environment, you have intelligent agents. They are also sensors, and there are also actuators. Because once something is sensed, something has to be transferred somewhere, so in order to transfer some signal from somewhere to somewhere, you need an actuator. And therefore, there is an action and there is an environment which sees that action and there is a percept which sends back the signal to the sensor. So you have intelligent agents on one side, you have sensors, sensors of the human beings on the other side. Now, uh, going for a little further, you have what is called an expert system, which also is an artificial intelligence example. Now, what is an expert system? It's a program that is designed to hold the accumulated knowledge of one or more domain experts. It reasons with knowledge of some specialist with the view to solving problems in that area. And they are also tested by being placed in the same real world problem solving situation, which means you create a context, you create a problem, you create the uh, methodologies to solve that, and you build all this into a program, you create an expert system. Some of the applications, again here, you, they, are, they are all over the place. They are basically AI systems. You have medical system for diagnosis of respiratory conditions. You have several AI PUFF systems which are currently used in the, uh, in the uh, detection of COVID uh, symptoms. There are prospectors used by geologists to identify sites for drilling and mining. How do I know whether uh, there is a gas inclusion somewhere? 
how do i know there is crude availability at some place and so on so there are uh, expert systems which allow there are companies like schlumberger which use these kind of expert systems to really identify uh, there, there are signal there are electromagnetic waves which are sent underneath and uh, they create uh, several uh, patterns and those patterns are uh, you know based on the color they are identified and you will really know whether there is oil gas and things like that deep inside the earth's crust now what are the applications there are some more applications dendral used to identify the structure of chemical compounds first used in 1965 there are for solid modeling several of these expert systems are built into the uh, you know, built into the systems that are available professionally today and lithian gives advice to archaeologists examining stone tools now coming to uh, machine learning which is another another great aspect of ai which is being uh, talked about uh, so much in detail today is a scientific discipline concerned with the development of algorithms that allow machines to mimic human intelligence in industry 4.0 the concept is human beings can talk to machines machines can talk to human beings machines can talk to machines themselves and you have a completed complete automated uh, setup where there are several machines put on a on a single uh, at a single place and each machine is programmed and then uh, through machine learning processes each machine converses with the other machine like human beings do and uh, you get a uh, complete uh, automated uh, setup uh in terms of uh, machine learning for example you can have robots uh, watering plants you can have uh, you know continuous uh, assembly lines uh, which are structured and monitored by machine learning uh, systems the other area of uh, uh, ai is actually robotics robotics uh, as you all know carl kapak was uh, was the guy who started off uh, and isaac asimov had a Uh, you know a novel a futuristic idea that he promoted and uh, uh, they they coined the uh, they coined a word in uh, uh, what is it uh, uh, the zek republic uh, language and uh, ro- robota is the is the word that is used in uh, zek republic and it means forced labor so robots were used as forced labor and therefore robota became robot robot and then the science behind that became robotics now this is a major field of ai a lot of machine learning systems a lot of artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithms are built into robotics so that one robot can do multiple functions can be programmed differently uh, you know they a lot of intelligence is built in, built into robots by building in several sensors uh, to handle tasks such as object manipulation navigation uh, you know program uh, problems of localization problems of na- navigation through obstacles and so on now we have seen some intelligence we have seen artificial intelligence we have seen have some applications and now we will see we have also seen some extensions like machine learning robotics and so on now in human intelligence there is intuition there is common sense there is judgment there is creativity and beliefs in a, in ai we have ability to simulate human behavior and cognitive processes so that's the one in one place it's all, it comes with the system in another place it's the ability to simulate uh, human uh, behavior in human intelligence the ability to demonstrate intelligence by communicating effectively whereas in artificial intelligence it happens by capturing and preserving human expertise you you uh, go through a process of uh, uh, teaching and then learning plausible reasoning and critical thinking is are inbuilt in human intelligence whereas in artificial intelligence fast response uh, makes do for uh, it, it makes up for uh, you know some gaps in uh, reasoning and critical thinking and so on <coughs> whereas humans are fallible there is no common sense within artificial intelligence whereas humans are uh, you know limited uh, knowledge uh, databases you can build massive databases into artificial intelligence and uh, um, though they cannot readily deal with 
mixed knowledge. Information processing uh, is serial and it happens almost uh, parallel multi, uh, in multiple uh, ways uh, when you use artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, within, uh, now there is also conventional computing and artificial intelligence computing. <coughs> Whereas AI softwares use the techniques of search and pattern matching, conventional systems, they follow logic, logical series of steps to reach a conclusion. So uh, the programming methodologies are different and uh, the uh, programming design tools are different and they are accordingly created. Now the, the perspective, I, I, I have a perspective of uh, what this uh, AI is about. For humans, intelligence is no more than taking the right decision at the right time. As human, yeah, uh, people will say I'm reasonably uh, intelligent if I can take a decision at uh, a right decision at the right time. And for machines, artificial intelligence is choosing a right decision at the right time. There are several decisions available based on a lot of experience and a lot of inputs from sensors and so on. But how do I pick the right decision from a massive set of uh, statements? Now that is AI. But I think AI is the second intelligence ever to exist. After human intelligence, probably we only have AI. Uh, so these, uh, these are some of the examples, like I said, speech recognition, computer vision, automatic programming. They're all typical examples. And as far as applications are concerned, AI is into everything, everything. Engineering, manufacturing, mining, medical, education, household, you name it, AI applications are there. Uh, there are several advantages of AI. Can take on stressful and complex work. Humans uh, tend to tire. Obviously, machines don't tire. And there is huge computing speed available, whereas the human brain can only act on certain at certain uh, speed, depending on the on the receptor and the uh, transmitter kind of uh, relationship and the neural net network uh, you know, uh, processes that happen within that. Now, uh, there are less errors and defects obviously in, in an automated process and uh, AI systems are much more versatile than human. But there is an other side of AI. All said and done, is AI something that uh, is always good? Maybe, maybe not. It lacks the human touch. It has the ability to replace human jobs. So therefore, there is a possibility of probably some retrenchment happening at different places. They can malfunction and do the opposite of what was required. For example, if uh, a certain target is required in a warfare and if the AI systems are programmed to drop a, drop a missile in some location, if it malfunctions and drops at some other location, you can imagine the uh, devastation that can follow. Then they are also they can also be misused uh, leading to mass scale destructions. So, for example, you you can have several drones uh, going together, and any technology, for example, can be misused. Any intelligence can be misused. It applies equally to the artificial intelligence. They have computing power, tolerance power, intuitive thinking, judging power. All these are there. As con concluding uh, concluding uh, slide, uh, the possibilities are many capability to speed up the overall progress. And uh, they also have some uh, ability to replace human beings. At least in hazardous locations, it's a very, very uh, good opportunity. In fact, radioactive material in uh, nuclear reactors or uh, places where uh, you have to bury the unspent fuel, or at all those places you need systems which, which are uh, not human operated because radioactivity, you know, uh, can uh, uh, cause uh, debilitating effects on human uh, body. So thank you. I have uh, given you an overview of what artificial intelligence is all about. And uh, probably if you have questions, I can uh, take them. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And Madhvi, ma'am, anyone? You can share my mail ID with them. And uh, any questions that they have, I'll be happy to. Definitely, uh, sir. Dr. Prakash, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. 
sir good evening sir good evening sir you said that uh, the capability of solving unsolved problems yeah so in what perspective we can think unsolved problems sir, related to no. every every problem has certain boundary conditions and uh, you will have to establish those uh, conditions and uh, you will have to create the context and then write a set of uh, equations which are ma matching matching these uh, you know possibilities either there are several conditions that can exist there can be singularities uh, while solving a problem which means at those points there may not be a viable solution in a, in a different situation there could be multiple solutions available and you need to pick up the best uh, solution possible so uh, it really depends on how you model the uh, uh, so called unsolved problem that you are talking about you will need to model that problem first create the inputs that uh, influence the problem and you also must have some some basic idea of what kind of outcomes uh, can be there and uh, then uh, uh, the uh, the uh, algorithms which are available can uh, help you to uh, get at some uh, solution sir so related to tolerance power uh, can you specify some of the algorithms uh... no no there are there are multiple uh, algorithms available uh, the you know the principles used in genetics the principles there are several search algorithms available based on several search methodologies so there are there are multi, multiples of uh, that available okay sir thank you thank you so dr madhavi ma'am you have any question good evening yes yes sir good evening sir good evening uh, sir just i want to know uh, how machine learning is useful in data communication no there are see uh, for example uh, mach with machine learning what you can in fact it's it's it uses one one uses the other uh, in fact uh, in machine learning what you try to do is Uh, make the machine learn new capabilities new abilities and so on now data communication is a medium where you uh, where you build systems where uh, certain data can be communicated in a certain form so therefore uh, there are uh, machine learning we would always use uh, data communication as a medium uh, to uh, perform uh, several uh, you know uh, several algorithms that help build uh, machine learning uh, thank you dr ss mantha sir it's really a wonderful presentation so we really appreciate you taking out time for us from your busy schedule so it's always been our pleasure to have you with us and we look forward to seeing you again for the upcoming programs thank you so much sir Have a nice day